Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Learn Lightroom CC, also known as Lightroom in the Cloud. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Geometry tab that's found in the Edit panel of Lightroom CC. The Geometry tab is probably the least used and maybe the least understood tab in Lightroom CC. In this video, I'm going to attempt to explain everything that you could do with it. Probably the most common thing you're going to need the Geometry tab for is to straighten a crooked image. As you can see, I have this image here and the horizon is visibly crooked. In this case, I would just go down to the Geometry tab and you'll notice once you open the tab that there's a drop down. It's the upright drop down. If you click on the drop down, you'll notice one of the choices is level. Just go to level, click on it, and it straightens your image as easy as that. Now, for many of us, that's probably our limit of using the geometry tab. But if you shoot uh, cityscapes, uh, street photography, maybe real estate photography, uh, wherever you're shooting buildings, you're probably going to need to use some of the more advanced features that are found in the Geometry tab. And to demonstrate those features, I have this a building of City Hall in Buffalo. And you can see that it looks like the building is falling backwards off the screen. And this is a common issue you have when you shoot architecture. Unless you're using an expensive tilt-shift lens, which will correct for this type of distortion, what you'll get is this. This happens when the lens face isn't perpendicular to the face of the building. In this case, the lens is tilted up, so it looks like the building is falling backwards. Very actually easy to correct, and there's a few different ways you could correct it. First of all, let's go back to this drop down. You'll notice there's more choices than just level. There's guided, and I'm going to show you guided in a moment, but down here below that we have auto. If we click on auto, uh, Lightroom is just going to analyze the image and come up with the best uh, possible correction for the image. So we'll click on that. And you can see that it seems to have fixed that falling backwards thing I was talking about. But maybe it's my eyes, but it looks like it's now leaning a little bit to the right. So auto didn't do such a great job. Now what you'll find is that some of these choices will work on, let's say, image A, but they won't work on image B but a different choice may work on image B. So that's why we have all these different um, functions within the geometry tab to help you fix the geometry of your image. So auto didn't do such a great job. Now we did level for the horizon on the other image that doesn't apply here. Vertical, let's fix this vertical issue where the image is falling backwards. We'll click on that and you'll notice that it fixed it, but we have all these kind of blank pixels over here. And that's what actually the Geometry tab will do in Lightroom or any application that has something similar. It actually kind of distorts the pixels of the image to get the image to appear to be corrected for this issue. Your best bet if you're really into shooting uh, cityscapes or you're into uh, real estate photography is to get a tilt, shape, tilt shift lens. Uh, they're rather, rather expensive, but they do crook for these issues, um, like organically, so that you're not distorting pixels. Now, with that said, this vertical doesn't look too good. We have these blank pixels. If I want to get rid of the blank pixels, just click on this little box, Constrain Crop. And you'll see when I do that, it really isn't acceptable. It just cropped out too much of the image. So we'll undo that. So, vertical didn't work too great. Let's go down to full, see what full looks like. So we'll click there. And it's pretty much the same thing. And we have these blank pixels again. And again, if I click on constraint crop, it's really not an acceptable image. And one thing I should note, even when we picked auto, it cropped out the bottom part of the image. You see how it, we're losing some pixels down there. So probably the best case scenario for this image would be to use auto, then go up to the crop tool and then straighten the image that way. Maybe that would be the best case scenario, right? Um, 
Now, there is another choice, though. Remember, I mentioned that there is guided. Well, what is guided? Well, that's actually using a tool. And with that tool, you're going to draw either two or four lines on the image. You're, hopefully, in your image, you have either two solid things in the image that in the scene were perfectly, let's say, vertical. And maybe, hopefully, you have two solid things in the image that were horizontal. And those are the lines you're going to draw on the image. So you could access the tool with the dropdown by just going on Guided. And now we have the tool. And you notice the tool is a kind of um, crosshair and a magnifier. Now, if you don't want to go to the dropdown, you could just activate the tool by clicking right here, and it automatically puts you in Guided. Now, this image doesn't really have obvious horizontals and verticals, does it? I mean, it kind of does, but you have to look for them. Uh, really, we have a lot of windows on the building, and the windows are perfectly horizontal and perfectly vertical as you look at them. Also, uh, the the building itself has a lot of kind of, for lack of a better term, nooks, uh, nooks and crannies in it. And you could see that there's some like horizontals there and some vertical lines in those nooks and crannies. So I'm going to use that. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to place this crosshair. You notice there's actually kind of two crosshairs. There's one in the kind of uh, 10 o'clock position, and then there's one in the middle of the circle. What we're doing is that one that's in that 10 or 11 o'clock position. That's the one we're going to place on what we feel is, in this case, I'm going to go the verticals first. And it doesn't matter if you do the vertical lines first or the horizontal line first, or if you just do one set, meaning you just do verticals. Don't worry about it, then you're done. Or you just do horizontals. It's, so for some images, just the two lines, whether they're horizontal or vertical, will work better. But for other images, you'll need to draw all four lines. So in this case, let's go up here and draw the vertical first. And I'm kind of going over this kind of facade of the building that I feel is right there, I believe. And I'll click once. Then I'll just hold that left mouse button down and drag down to the other part that I feel is the bottom, at least most part of this vertical line. Now I could come back in here and readjust these lines if I find that I need to. Okay, so there's one line. Now nothing happens. Now when I draw the second line, it's going to start to adjust the image. So I'll go to this other side where I feel this other vertical is. Click once, draw down, and go right about there and let go of the left mouse button and you'll see that it corrected the image now. And it's pretty much similar to what one of these other uh, choices were either auto or vertical was already. Probably vertical, right? So I got those two lines. Um, I'm going to try to draw two horizontal lines now. Now I have kind of a line right here on the building and then I have this little top of this. So I'm going to use those as my vertical, or I'm sorry, my horizontal line. So I'll go right like that. You can see when I draw that, drew that one, it corrected a little bit. And we'll go over here and draw one here. And there, it corrected the image. Now I think that is probably of the choices we've done so far, probably the best correction we've had. Uh, it did crop out a considerable amount of pixels at the bottom of the image. But uh, the building itself doesn't appear to be as distorted as it was with the vertical adjustment. Um, it seems to be really what that building looks like. It is kind of flared out a bit, a little bit, I think, that isn't really there in the real building. But... Um, Overall, I think of the choices uh, we've looked at, this has been the best one. So that's how you would do a guided adjustment. Now, one thing I'd like to note, I found that usually the adjustment, the guided adjustment works best if, let's say, your two vertical lines are as far apart from one another as possible and your two horizontal lines are as far apart as, once, as possible. So if you could get them on you know, towards the outside edges of the frame, those usually work out the best. In this case here, my both were relatively close together for the lines I chose to try for this image. But 
that's that. Now there's still even more we could do here. So I'm going to undo this by hitting Command Z a few times. That Z is in Zebra. Uh, if you have a PC, that's Control Z. So we're kind of back out uh, to off. All right, so that's the guided adjustment. But if you look over to the, where it says Geometry, to the far right, you'll see there's a little button here. When you click on that, you open up a bunch of different sliders. And these sliders let you do all kinds of stuff to your image. First one, distortion. That hopefully was corrected with your optics adjustment when you enabled lens corrections. Uh, but what that does is it corrects either pincushion or barrels distortion. So if I go down here, let me close that optics tab down. If we go down here and I move it to the right, we're making the image look more pincushiony, right? So we're going to be correcting barrel distortion. If I go to the left, I'm making the image look more like a barrel, so I'm correcting for pincushion distortion. So if you find that your image has some pincushion or barrel distortion, go you slide the slider either way to correct for it. And once you're done, you could click the constraint crop button to get rid of the blank pixels. Now I'm just going to undo all of that. So we're right back to square one. So that's the distortion slider. Now the vertical slider will fix for this falling back issue. If I click on this and I go like that, you'll see we're kind of swinging the image out so that we have a more... Um, vertical image but unfortunately if we constrain crop it well that didn't look too bad right there that did good so that that wasn't bad at all so that that works nicely you're just doing it by eye when you use these obviously these sliders right so uh, that is the vertical slider the horizontal slider will swing it the other way so we're swinging that way or swinging that way the rotate slider is rotating it so if you have a crooked image you could come in and rotate it right there aspect slider is you're kind of zooming in or, or scrunching in sorry or scrunching out for lack of a better word that's what the aspect does the scale slider is what i thought i was doing that will zoom in or kind of zoom out so you could use scale oh uh, let's say that if you're correcting for some distortion here let's do this and you have these blank pixels, you could come in and scale it in until you get rid of those blank pixels. That's one way to do it. So there's all different ways you could do the same thing, right? X offset just kind of slides the image over to the right or slides it to the left. And Y offset does it up or down. So that's all these sliders in here. Now for this image, I think the guided adjustment worked pretty well. Um, I think this, just doing this vertical right here worked well. Sometimes you don't have to have it perfectly up and down. Just correct it a little bit and it will uh, look much better. And I think in this case it does look much better. And I didn't lose as much of the foreground um, area as I did with any of the other choices. So that's pretty much everything you could do with the geometry adjustment. It is um, one of the tabs that you have to get a little used to, you have to practice with it in order to uh, understand all its functionality and to use it the best way possible. Because it's one of those tabs where you could do the same thing multiple different ways, but sometimes one of those ways is slightly different than all the others. And that's why you work with it. So hopefully this helps you better understand this tab. Thank you everyone for watching my video series, Learn Lightroom CC. If you could do me a favor and like and share the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate that as well. Also, in the description below this video will be a link to my website. Come visit my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. There you'll find all kinds of free photography how-to articles and videos. I'll talk to you guys soon.